Good morning. Happy Saturday. I've just been for my run and I'm at East Point in the woods and I just thought this was so beautiful that I had to share it with you guys because this is just such an amazing place really and so nice that it's being preserved for people to be able to get some outside time and some, you know, the green space. And as I sat down, well, I was going to sit down just here and do my live stream, but I found this beautiful old tree, and I just think I'd show it to you, this fallen down tree, and I was just looking at it, and maybe high off the vibes, surfing the dwarfs off my run, but I was looking at it and going, just looking at the tree roots, and just the intricate weaves of the tree roots, and just how, well, perhaps not for this tree, but how the, the tree roots connecting together as they do deep into the earth, perhaps maybe this is one of the African mahoganies, I don't know, they tend to be quite shallow rooted, but you know, if you look at some of the, the trees that do have those intricate weaves, and I think it's the oak tree, that their roots go deep, deep into the earth and then actually connect with other oak trees, and it's the depth and breadth of the root systems as well as the connectivity to the other oak trees and obviously the African mahoganies don't have that as part of their thing but with the oak trees it's what allows them to withstand I think it was Hurricane Katrina was where I heard about this that all of the other vegetation and, and buildings and landscape was devastated by Hurricane Katrina but the oak trees withstood the winds because they had these beautiful, deep, broad root systems which connected to the other trees, to the other oak trees. And so what you would see then after Hurricane Katrina was just all these oak trees because they were the ones that actually withstood the, the winds and the devastating winds. And so what... I take from that and what hopefully you'll take from that too is that obviously yeah you can have these deep broad root systems yourself but it's actually the connectivity to others which makes us strong which allows us to withstand adversity and withstand the hurricane wind sometimes that that life throws our way and so such a beautiful message we can take from nature and oh wow look at this that's so cool so beautiful if you look at these these little can you see those where yeah there all these little knobbly bits it's just yeah so beautiful yeah so obviously this um this tree oh, didn't withstand but it now is just obviously part of the landscape and it's, it's beautiful and obviously is now a little home for, for all the lizards and whatever other little critters can um, come and live in there now. Oh, I've got a, got a stinging sweat in my eye. That doesn't feel good. <laughs> so yeah, so I hope everybody's had a great week. I'm just going to try and sort out my eye. Ugh. It doesn't go together, does it? Sweat and eyeballs. Ow. <laughs> I'm going to have a drink too. Hmm. So, yes, hope you've all had a great week. Oh, goodness me, it's so, just I catch my breath now. And yeah, I just, um, oh, myself, I've had a really, really kind of um, deep dive sort of processing week this week and really coming to some... I guess for me, really important kind of realizations and um, decisions for you know for next year, basically, and that would have come through in, in the writings where I've been encouraging everybody to you know stop and have a little think about you know what are your priorities and what are what's important to you, and now is a really great time for reflection. I know it's a busy time for some, and you know a lot of people kind of like to leave this till January, and my, I myself. You know, tend to leave like the real formal sort of planning stuff till till January, um, but the reflection time can certainly start now because a lot of the things that you need to sort of set up and put into place actually 
um, need to happen now. And so, you know, this is sort of, you know, I guess something that for me I've already started to do because with my little wife, or my eldest actually, uh, you're getting to the age where she can go to preschool and really being kind of so conflict, deeply conflicted about this in my own mind in terms of is she too young and getting her started, but actually kind of there being two things going on here. One, which is looking after the needs of others and what, what does she need? And I'm sure everybody can relate to this where, you know, you consider the needs of others and, and sometimes put the needs of others before your own uh, and you know happily for me in this case the the needs were actually um, were compatible with her needs for a bit of time and space for herself actually sort of really did connect with kind of my need for some more time and space for myself but what was really coming out was this real really deep sort of conditioning about what it means to be a mum, uh, what it means to be a woman and what is it that I'm allowed to do and how aspiring am I really allowed to be? How much can I actually ask for in terms of time and space when it is actually just for me? And I don't mean just for me in terms of going off to the day spa and having massages, but just for me in terms of living my passion and my purpose. And you know, that 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 purpose that I will do regardless of whether I get paid to do it or not. And so something that is so deeply within me, the message, my, my passion really, in terms of what it is that I'm doing here primarily, uh, to be able to get what I believe is a message that needs to get out there. And, you know, this is something that is just so important to me and it absolutely really feels selfish for me to do it because I'm taking time away from my family and... Of taking a time away from other what are priorities for me uh, in some ways it feels selfish to do it but in other ways it feels selfish not to do it because I can and I, I'm passionate about it and I love it and so here you know I sit with a, a, a what feels like a deep deep conflict within myself around what is it that I'm passionate about doing and what is it that I feel called to do and really honouring that part of myself to be able to bring that out into the world because I believe it makes a difference for people. I believe that more and more and more people will be impacted by this message and their lives can be transformed and changed by that and that's a deep honour for me to be able to do that. At the same time, obviously I have other priorities and I don't want to sacrifice what's you know really important to me in order to be able to do that. And so I guess what it comes down to is am I prepared to uh, put my money where my mouth is or if that's, a, if that's the appropriate saying here, but am I prepared to actually do what it is that's most important to me in terms of my passion purpose work, put that you know, really on the, the same level as looking after others. So is looking after me and doing my purpose work as important as looking after the people in my life? And really, does it even need to be a conflict? Because if I'm not doing what makes me happy, then everybody's miserable. And you can just ask Dean about that. <laughs> because if, you know, anything gets in the way of me doing my purpose work, then I, I suffer for that. I feel... I just don't feel right inside or good inside. And so, you know, really that then gets projected outwards. And I had this really funny insight as I was going for my run where there was this God awful smell and it was like, it literally smelled like shit, <laughs> like literally. And I was like, Oh my God. And then there it was again. And there it was again. And I was like, Oh my God, like this shit smell is seriously following me. And then I, I thought to myself, like, wouldn't it be funny if it was actually on my on my foot and I'm like kind of projecting that outside and saying like, oh my God, this shit smells everywhere, but really it's actually me, on, my, on me. And, you know, lucky for me, it actually it wasn't the case. But I was like, how often do we do that though? Like we're cruising through life and we're going, oh my God, this shit stinks, it's everywhere. But really without realizing, well, the common denominator is me. And I guess that's the realization that I've come to where I'm, you know, I'm cranky with everybody because I'm not getting the space and time that I need. Whereas actually their, their needs for my time are legitimate. I'll be back in the bush. No 
reception. I'm, gonna, I'm on the move. So yeah, their needs for their, my, their needs for my time are legitimate, and as are my needs for my time. Uh, and yet, I have this deep conditioning around what it means to be a mum and what it means to be a woman, and you know that's so deeply ingrained. And I had a um, another insight this week around I was doing the drying up of all things, and I had this flashback like I picked up three plates and start started drying them, and I was like, oh wow, like. Where did I learn to dry plates like that? You know, not pick them up one at a time. You pick them up three at a time and you rotate them through. And I was like, wow, like my nan taught me how to do that. And, g'day. And yeah, my nan taught me how to do that. And what was, what I found really interesting was in, you know, her generation, like my nan never worked. So she was, you know, the stay at home mum's housewife. And, you know, that was what they did in the day. Never even learnt to drive or anything like that. So, um, you know, her role in the household was that of being, you know, the, the housewife. And so, but what was interesting, I find, is that, you know, we had, you know, family dinners and Nan would cook. And then all the women, and including us girls, you know, would get up and I'd get the nudge from Dad, you know, that I'd go and do the washing up. And I didn't even realise at the time what was happening there, which was this deep conditioning about what my role was. And everybody's got that, by the way, like men and women, around, you know, deep conditioning around what your roles are and what your what your purpose in life is. And so basically if my if I had followed that conditioning to you know to the letter you know basically what my role would be would be that of you know housework cooking and and cleaning and there's nothing wrong with that and child rearing is definitely it's it's you know it's a passion and it's but it's hard work too you know that it's it's a challenging job and you know and particularly if you've got other things that you've got to do in your life and that's you know that's the case and for women these days particularly you know that We've given, we've been given a choice, and that's. I think that's a great thing, but it's also a really, really difficult thing because with choice, you've got conflict. You know, so back in the day when there wasn't a choice for women and men, you know, men would go out to work and women would stay home. Like that probably sucked for men too. <laughs> what if you know, Dee despised to be the stay-at-home mum, like or dad, I should say, not the mum, not after a sex change. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. So. Oh, oh God, I've got to get off that, get off that rant. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he, he aspires to be a stay-at-home dad and, you know, I'm all for that too, absolutely. Like, yeah, so, um, but, you know, that conditioning around what your role is is so deep and that, you know, for women and men, you know, there are choices these days. And, you know, I took my little niece to the um, my playgroup this week She's like, that was weird. I was like, oh, what was weird about it? And she goes, oh, there was only all, there was all women there. There was only, only girls. And I was like, yeah, well, that's kind of where society is still at. And it really is where, yeah, women have been given choice in some ways. But have we really? You know, because the conditioning is still there around what it is that we're kind of expecting ourselves to do. And for me, what I was trying to do was to do both basically and I was trying to do all the work and you know do all the child rearing and all the housework and all the all the stuff and it was yeah well, no wonder I was so exhausted and all this stuff about you know how can I have more energy is not so much about having a lack of energy because you know I think most people would agree that I have quite a lot of it but that I was stretching myself too thin so basically trying to you know, be there with the kids while they're awake and work while they're asleep. And that's, I've been doing that for four years. And so I was like, ah, why am I at, a, at, a, at an energy deficit? How can I get more energy? And really what the answer is, is not so much how can I get more energy, um, but it's to change what it is that I'm expecting of myself and to change the rules, basically. So my rules around being a mum, a certain type of mum, you know, a Stepford mum, you know, uh, and, you know, trying to be the career woman at the same time and realising that that's just not sustainable. And I think I've done a pretty good job of doing it for the last four years. But, you know, what's been happening for me lately is just like, yeah, this is not sustainable. Something needs to change, something needs to give. And so, yeah, um, 
that's coming back to the reflection time for this, for your whole planning for next year, about really then, you know, thinking about what what's that going to look like and how does my life need to change to be able to support me and to support what it is that I want to do and you know not not well I guess in a selfish way like why not why not such a dirty word selfish but does it have to be because you know really as I've said before you know self-care being that act of altruism that if you're not happy then normal baby and they will they will suffer I'll just let you know where I am me it's a bit uh, not as exciting as it usually is because of the you know the tides out so it's a bit mud flat city but um it's still pretty um yeah so really actually tuning in and this is again can be really quite challenging it certainly was challenging for me in terms of coming to terms with the fact that i really was so deeply conflicted within myself and really trying to do it all and really frustrated with myself that I couldn't without realising actually that the expectations were always realistic, uh, sorry, unrealistic, that what I was trying to do was unrealistic and that it's okay, God, how many times do I say this to others and not even realising how deep the onion goes, but really, you know, how unrealistic those expectations are and it's okay to ask for support it's okay to ask for help and it's okay for things to change if you change your mind around what it is that you're doing so for me four years ago yes I decided to stay at home with the kids I always had a plan to go back to work and I have done uh, but it's always been work being the second fiddle uh, you know, work's always been important to me. It's always been what I love, but it, you know, it has played second fiddle uh, up until recent times where I've actually re-entered, I guess, into the workforce in a way that actually is my purpose work. And so now realizing that if that's if that is truly heart-centered deeply important to me then absolutely things need to change around that and things can change around that and things will change around that which then allows me to have the energy to be able to do what it is that I am called to do on a deep heart and soul level and to be able to follow that with passion and purpose and to be able to make that something that's sustainable and so that's where that self-care is yes about doing all the things that look after me but actually truly deeply being as honest with myself as I can and this is hard to say and it may be unpopular but to say actually that looking after the, my beautiful children who I love deeply is actually not enough that I need something else and this is the position that as a woman you know the 21st century I have that choice but the shame around acknowledging that is so deep for me that I realise that, yes, we've been given a choice, but we haven't got the structures around it to support women around to do that. And the evidence is there. And if you look around at, you know, the lack of female leaders out there, people are calling for female leaders out there because we ju there just are not enough of them. And so... That is a truth, and oh my God, I got tingles, so I know I'm speaking truth here, people. It's so true that, you know, women have been given a choice, but we do not have the structures internally within ourselves to say, women, it's okay to step up. It's okay to say that raising families is important, but you have purpose work to do as well. And that is, there is no shame in that, even if you feel it, because I have deeply, deeply felt conflicted and, and shamed uh, not by anybody else but myself around that actually that's not enough you know that I love them and me wanting to do work does not make them any less important to me it's just I have also got a purpose I've got something else that I've, I've got to bring into the world and by doing my purpose work that I would hope to shape them to be able to do the same because children will always, always, always follow what you do. They won't, won't listen to what you say. Oh God, bane of my existence. But anyway, they won't listen to what you listen to what you say, but they'll always listen to what you do. And so stepping into your purpose and living a life which acknowledges that you are important too, your purpose is important too, allows them to step into their own purpose work as well and allows others 
kids, not even just children, but anyone around you, by you stepping up and claiming your purpose allows those people in your life to do the same. And you can be the best cheerleader in the world, but nothing cheers people on more than you blazing a trail, leading the way and say, come with me. And I love, love, love that that um, saying about the rising tide rises all ships and if this is you and you are wanting to be a rising ship then what I say to you is is come join me you know that this tide is rising like it is rising and I can bring you with me I want to bring you with me and you know come join me because this is something that to me is so important that you know for people to step into their own power men and women alike when you are stepping into your own power when you are living your life of passion and purpose then you allow other people to do the same and that is the only time that you can actually truly speak authentically is when you're actually doing it yourself and how do you know you're living your life of passion and purpose it's because you're happy <laughs> And, you know, this is so, so key, you know, because all about the under the Bodhi tree, you know, has all been about happiness. Absolutely. But what I come to time and time and time again is what genuinely makes us happy is when we're deeply, deeply honest with ourselves about what's important, what's most important, our values. And when we live in alignment with our values, we do our purpose work. We are driven creators and innovators. You know, that's exciting. And that's where you are happy when you give yourself permission to do that and that does mean breaking through conditioning it does mean breaking what you know you might have thought was a rule your whole life and breaking through that and giving yourself permission to be able to do that is deeply deeply courageous and it's it's challenging too which is where I say you know you know as a community this is something that is so much more powerful because you have got people around you who are rising with you. It's not something that you have to do alone because, you know, there are a lot of people who are happy with mediocrity. There are a lot of people who are happy with just the status quo and more power to you. That's fine. But what I'm saying is that that's not me and, you know, that I definitely, definitely want to bring my passion and purpose work into the world and bringing my passion work, purpose work into the world. And that is something that I would absolutely be deeply honoured to help you with as well. And so if you feel deeply within you that you have thwarted yourself, your own progress, that you know deep within your heart that there is something that you want to bring into this world and you have sabotaged yourself or you've told yourself that that's not a thing or you've told yourself that that's not allowed or that's not a real job or that won't make you money or whatever it is, whatever is that inner narrative and you know that you've been blocked and thwarted and stopped and people have said something and you've listened, you've believed them or whatever and you know that this is something that you really want to get past, then I've got something really super exciting coming for you in January. I'm not ready to talk about it just yet, but I've got something coming for you in January that I'd really, really super be excited to, to let you know about coming up very soon. Because again, it is something that, you know, it can be very isolating, you know, this journey of really stepping outside of the box, you know, stepping outside of the matrix, essentially, the matrix where everybody's just following their conditioning, what we're told and programmed to do. And that is a challenge. But when you're the one stepping outside of the matrix and everybody else is stuck there, it's so easy to get dragged back in. And so what you need is a, is a community. You need people around you who are going to go, fuck them, keep going. <laughs> because, you know, you you need that. Because if, if you've set a course to go somewhere and, you know, that is so entirely different and so entirely out of the box that other people are just not going to get it and the only other people who are going to get it are other purpose-driven, soul-driven people who are out there creating and innovating, then you want to align yourself with those kinds of people. You absolutely have to because otherwise you will be re-brainwashed back into mediocrity. And that's just a real travesty because as I said before, you know, it is, for me, it feels selfish to take my time away from my family and to do my purpose work because, you know, again, you know, is that a real thing? Is that really, you know, is that really all that important? But for me, it's a must. 
And so it feels selfish to draw myself away from them because they're important, but at the same time it feels selfish not to do it because I just see the need. I see the need and it's something that I know that I can help with. It's a difference that I can make coming back to that be the change that you wish to see in the world. And that's what I'm doing. And for whatever that is for you, if you do want to do that for yourself, you're called to do that. And I know there are people out there who have big dreams, big ideas, and then they look around and people just aren't doing much with their life and they think that that's normal and that's okay because it is normal. But if you don't want to be normal, you want to be something amazing and fantastic, then you need support. You need a cheer squad. You need a team around you that will support you and love you and cheer you on because, again, it's so easy to get sucked back into the matrix, so easy to get sucked back into mediocrity. And if you've got a message, if you've got a purpose, you have a difference, a unique difference that you can make in the world, whatever that is, it's uniquely you, the difference that you can make. I'm super, super excited to be able to see that blossom in people. And for me, like what I see when I see people is potential. I always just look at people and go, oh my God, there is just such amazing potential in everyone. And as I've said, if, if my belief was what it took, my belief in your potential is what it took to make magic, then it would, it would happen because I absolutely just see people and go, oh my God, you're amazing. There's, there's so much potential there to create miracles and magic. But then that's not what it takes. What it takes is for you to believe in you and for you to say, yeah, this is worth it and I am worth it and I'm going to, yeah, back to put your money where your mouth is or put your energy where your mouth is or where your soul is or where your heart is or whatever. I need to come up with something specific to that because really, you know, it is about making that commitment to you, making that commitment to what's deep, deep within inside of you to be able to bring that out into the world and let it shine and let it make a difference and let it really light other people up. You know, you be that lighthouse in that area that is for you, whatever that is. And, you know, to actually be able to honour yourself enough to say, yep, yeah, you know, this is it. And for you to believe in you enough to make that commitment, for you to believe in you enough to say, yep, yeah, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> and to acknowledge again for yourself that, you know, you those people around you will change and those people around you will actually physically change or they will change within themselves. And so I mentioned yesterday about the uh, the TFB dinner that we had and, and it's so interesting because, you know, as I said, our TFBs, Trust Fund Baby Lunches, if you missed it, you know, now they're you know, a special Christmas dinner that we have every year now. Um that it was really interesting because in days gone by, you know, they were pretty boozy, you know, like I, they were boozy, you know, they, and they were great fun. And, you know, I used to love that when I was a party girl, you know, and uh, they, uh, that's changed, you know, that has changed. And so for me now, you know, what was great is, you know, having, and oh my God, <laughs> if you, if you heard yesterday about the, uh, the, I said I was going to have a virgin espresso martini and I looked on the menu, sure enough, espresso martini, awesome. And it said, um, you know, what's in it? And it said espresso and, um, the rest is secret. I went, oh, that sounds great. I'm taking one of those. And so then I said, can I have a virgin espresso martini? And he looks at me and he goes, uh, so you want a coffee? <laughs> and I said, well, no, I want the espresso martini just without the alcohol. And he said, ah, uh, that's a coffee. And I said, well, what's all this about the magic? And he said, oh, that's just uh, the alcohol. And I went, ah, oh, that's a load of crap. So I was pretty pissed off about that. But I had to laugh because espresso martini being just a virgin espresso martini being actually just a coffee. I was like, okay, well, no. Anyway, he made me this whiz bang strawberry deliciousness that was just amazing. So yeah, but anyway, my um, my beautiful uh, old friend, long term friend, you know, saying, well, he felt well, he felt a bit sad, and he goes, well, you know, this is tradition we're talking about. Like we used to go over to Mandora, and you know, the first thing he would do, we'd go up to the little chair, looking over the beach, and we'd have G and Ts, and it was just you know, sun go down, just beautiful, but all associated and centered around alcohol, and then the TFBs, you know, bottle of wine, two, three, four, or five, however long we sat there for. God, that sounds like a lot. Probably wasn't five. Hopefully not. <laughs> but, you know, we're knocking back the wines, having a great time at the time. 
But, you know, life changes, people evolve, and, you know, he was feeling a bit sad about that. And he goes, you know, there are some traditions that we need to maintain. And I was like, well, yeah, that is true if those traditions – you know that if they if they serve you if they are they are generally ge- generally genuinely nurturing and soul nurturing nourishing then yeah let's keep them and me committing myself to going and being there with these beautiful friends and having a laugh and just you know solving the problems of the world and planning our overseas travels to Tuscany and all the beautiful things we have planned and we do together Absolutely all up for that. But, you know, the tradition of, you know, knocking back 15 bottles of wine, not quite. Uh, but those traditions can change. And I said, well, yeah. So, yes, yes, some traditions can stay, but some traditions need to change. And it was like, well, yeah, well, yeah, good point. Because, you know, that is the reality. Some traditions can evolve and they can change and they can become ones that are nurturing and nourishing and genuinely, genuinely. I can't say that word today, genuinely nourishing and soul nurturing. And so that means today I can get up and do my purpose work. It means that I can get up and go and do, you know, uh, my run and I can do my journaling and I can do my writing and I can do my client work later on today, you know. And so all of that happens because, you know, I am clear and, and clean and not having spent the night out on the piss, basically. <laughs> and so really, really importantly that I can say, well, these traditions are evolving and they're changing as I do. And so, you know, that is, again, my commitment to myself and again about that you know changing things to be able to support you know the person that I am and the person and the difference that I want to make in the world and so then again inviting you to really think and spend this time now uh, coming up to you know next year 2018 what is it that you want to be doing for yourself what is it that you know you envisage for 2018 and maybe some of those changes need to be starting be started to be put into the planning stages now like I said you know for me to put you know my daughter into school that obviously needed to be planned now I couldn't do that in January that would have been too late and so you know if you're tuning in to what you want to be doing for 2018 just getting a bit of an idea uh, you can do the formal planning and you know goal setting or whatever it is later on in January but to actually start to get a bit of a feel and if you go back and read some of the blogs this week they're all invitations for you to start to really think consciously and deliberately about what it is that you want from your from your life gen you know over the course of your life which then translates to you know, year by year month by month type thing but to actually tune in and ask yourself what is it that you want from your life because you know that holy fuck i created the wrong life is a real thing it is a real thing and if you look at people who are on their deathbeds you know and they say you know basically i lived my life for somebody else or i you know i really wish that I had listened to my heart. I really wish that I had done more of whatever the fuck it is that I wanted to do. You know, that is a real, real thing and that can happen to you and it does happen to people. And, you know, don't think that it's not going to be you if you don't actually stop and think and consciously, deliberately create your own life, create the life that you want. And like I've just talked about before, you know, that can evolve and that can change. Like four years ago, yes, I did want to be, you know, committing to the family and I am still committed to my family, but that has to evolve and change and to say, well, yeah, it's that plus this and how does that now align and how can they align and not not be in conflict? How can I resolve that conflict? Whatever needs to happen to resolve that conflict. And so it does evolve, it does change. And so every single year that needs to be revised and probably not every single year, every six months it needs to be revised because you know if you are evolving and you're changing that can happen at light speed then you can get to six months down the track and it can look entirely different you know you can achieve everything that you set out to achieve in six months if you're purpose driven and goal directed and solutions focused you're not getting sucked into the vortex of misery and woe when things don't turn out like you go oh shit that didn't work and reset yourself off to the you know wherever it is that you want to go and so that can happen with support, that can happen with a community and a cheer squad, absolutely. And, you know, I really invite you to, you know, to really think about that because that is something that is so crucial, again, so you don't get sucked back into the matrix of mediocrity. And so, yeah, to actually now, use the time now to really think about what's 2018 going to look like for you? How does that fit within the scheme of your life? How does that fit within the, you know, your true north? 
You know, if we look at your values as your true north, how might next year be you know, either the first step or the next step towards what's most important to you? What is your heart and your soul calling out for you to invite into the world? And that will only happen when you actually acknowledge, when you believe in yourself, when you have the courage enough to say, yep, this is important and I'm going to create it. And you start to take action on that, consistent action on that, and to be able to really sculpt and change your life. And that's been the consistent message all week. Obviously, it's on my desktop because it's what I'm doing, uh, shifting and changing next year to really support me to be able to do more and more and more of my purpose work as well as love my, my family and, and be there and be the best mum that I can be and to know that you know to be the best mum means to be a happy mum and you know again being the model for them that I want want for them you know I want them to be living their purpose and their passion so I have to model that to them I can't just tell them to do it I have to do it myself and so yeah, I would super duper encourage you to take this time now, you know, that just even if you're just contemplating it and thinking about it and just getting a bit of a sense for what it looks like, uh, that there might be some shifting sands that need to start to happen now, conversations that need to be had now to be able to set you up to really launch yourself off into an amazing 2018. As I said, there's something really, really super exciting coming up in January that I really, really hope that you're going to want to be a part of. I just know that if you are a purpose-driven person, you're, you're going to want to be a part of it because it's, it's the very thing, as I say, that rising tide rises all ships. And so if you want to be part of this rising tide, then I certainly suggest that you get in on it because when you are part of a team, you're part of a community who really support you and love you and cheer you on, then it really makes things so much easier, it makes you more consistent, and it means that your purpose is just around the corner. You know, the realisation of some of your, your goals that you've been working towards is just around the corner. And like I've said before, that you know, when you reach that goal, there's always more. There's always the next step. There's always the next step. Because when you're a purpose-driven person, then there is no achievement. It's the journey is the reward in and of itself. And life just gets better and better and better as you bring more and more goodness into your life. And so, yes, this is coming for you in January. And I'll announce it very soon because it's super exciting. And so I really, really hope you've had a great day. A great, sorry, great week. And I do hope you have a great day and a great weekend. And, yes, if you can, spend some time contemplating. Go over the blogs. There's some uh, really important prompts there for you to have a bit of a think about just to start to uh, sculpt and change your thinking to uh, thinking points for you to contemplate to start to really think about what you want to bring into your life next year uh, and so take some time out have a read of the blogs if you haven't because uh, there's some really cool uh, guiding points there for you to have a bit of a think about to really start to hone your thinking to you know create your life consciously and deliberately don't end up on your deathbed going holy fuck I created the wrong life because it happens it's a thing don't let it happen to you. Have a read of the blogs and use those questions in there as thinking points to start to you know, change your thinking around what you want for 2018. And so, yes, have a great day and I'll talk to you very soon. See you later.